so we had never heard of the Land Between the Lakes recreation area, so we thought we'd take a few minutes and tell you guys about it. Um, so maybe you think about coming this way. If you're coming out between uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee, it's a great place to stay. And now we're going to take a couple minutes and tell you a little bit about the Land Between the Lakes. Between the Lakes is a 170,000 acre national recreation area located in western Kentucky and Tennessee. Managed by the Forest Service, Land Between the Lakes features over 300 miles of shoreline, 500 miles of trails, a variety of camping options, wildlife viewing, and much, much more. Land Between the Lakes offers four developed campgrounds, 11 self-service campgrounds, and five basic campgrounds, as well as endless opportunities for dispersed camping within the 170,000 acre park. Okay, so we are in the T area of Hillman Ferry Campground, and I think there's probably 40 or 50 sites in T area, and I believe there's A, B, C, and D areas as well. Um, what I would say, I'll, I'll drive around a little bit and try to get you some idea of what the different sites are like in the T area. It's very nice and shaded. Big um, pines give you a lot of shade, but still, um, and it's going to be in the 90s today, so that's nice. That makes it easier. Um, some of the sites are more level, some are less. Uh, you know, so I think you'd you'd want to try to pick your site uh, as best as you can for your needs. Um, there are showers and toilets, and then the good thing about T area, I, I believe all the sites are full hookups, which was one of the things we were looking for as we were planning to stay here for five days. Um, currently. Uh, we're kind of here a little bit on the off season. Um, it's still, again, going to be 90 degrees, so it's plenty warm. The campground is, you know, maybe half full today, midweek, and um, you know the sites are relatively private. They're set up so that you know, as you're sitting outside your camper, mostly you're looking into the forest or you know, looking over the campground, not not looking right into your neighbors business so that's nice uh, and then over here you can see on my side there's some um, storage for extra vehicles so a lot of people because this is land between the lakes a lot of people are coming down here to do boating so you can store your pontoon off the side and then uh, camp there's also an archery range and uh, there's just a lot of activities we'll sit down and kind of talk through all that uh, but for the moment I'm gonna drive us through a couple more campground loops now I'm coming into the D area. Uh, again, you'll just get a sense of it. We'll probably not do um, every single loop, but we'll try to give you a general sense of kind of the spacing and uh, shade versus non-shade, etc. seeing they look like they all have uh, electric and water um, but I'm not seeing full hookups uh, I may be incorrect you could certainly check the land between the lakes website to confirm that but it looks like more um, electric and sewer out here. I'm sorry electric and water I think I see sewer on some but not all uh, one other concern that I know we have as we travel with the kids and for work is uh, cell coverage and frankly it's not very good here at Hillman Ferry. Um, our plan is when we need to have good consistent cell coverage we'll, we'll find a way to go into town and maybe find a coffee shop or something like that and uh, work in town and then come back out to enjoy the um, National Recreation Area here. There, there does seem to be a lot to do and uh, like I said we'll talk that through with you. So again this is one of the sea area loops. Um, these sites do look like they're right out on the water. 
Um, so they're going to be very nice from that perspective. Again, I think they're just electric and water, um, but they look very nice and they are looking out into a part of, uh, and I'm not sure which lake that is, if that's Kentucky Lake or Barkley Lake, um, but we'll look that up as well. On the hill there, I think you can see some of the cabins. They're, they look like more of um, smaller log cabins, probably one room, maybe two. Um, not like some state parks that have gone into these luxury cabins. These look pretty simple. Um, I think they probably have uh, bathrooms and a you know, bedroom, but they probably have uh, pretty small. So I stopped here at the archery range, which is set up uh, with firing positions at 20, 25, and 30 yards, I believe. Um, it's empty today, and unfortunately, we did not bring our um, bow and arrows, so we're not gonna be able to take advantage of this, but it does um, look like a pretty good setup. Some of the targets have been used quite a bit, um, but it's here. There's also for the hunters, there's a deer cleaning area over there through the woods a little bit, uh, which could be very helpful. Um, for those of you coming out here to the National Forest in order to hunt. Hey, good morning. We are out here uh, at Land Between the Lakes uh, National Recreation Area. And today's gonna be another hot one. I think it said 97 degrees. So what we're planning to do today, they have a couple of indoor activities um, that we'll probably do during the real hottest part of the day. Um, we're gonna go down to the visitor center and see what they have there and we're gonna head off to their planetarium and see what that's like. Um, and then there's two days of cooler weather coming up, so that's when we're gonna do um, some of the other cool things that look um, like they'd be better for colder weather days. So right now we're gonna get some breakfast going and uh, finish up some school work and finish up some regular work and um, then we'll be ready to roll. Key attractions at Land Between the Lakes include the Elk and Bison Prairie, the Home Place 1850s Working Farm, the Visitor Center and Planetarium, and the Woodlands Nature Center. Here, Will and I are here at the Visitor Center and Planetarium, and uh, we're gonna go in and see what kind of information and exhibits they have. And then um, Eamon had to actually go back because he forgot he had a geometry class. So it's just the two of us right now. The Golden Pond Visitor Center is quite excellent. The museum-like visitor center has historic photographs and plaques explaining the rich history and heritage of the land and the people who lived between the rivers. The exhibit also delves into the building of the dams on the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers with the eventual forming of the land between the lakes. Okay, so Will and I just came out of the visitor center and the planetarium. Um, the visitor center was very informational. What, they gave us all the history of this area from what, like prehistoric Indians to European settlers? I think from 7,000 7, BC, a little bit before that. Right, all the way up to like even pretty modern times? Mm, to 2080, I think. <laughs> yeah, so that was great. A lot of information about um, you know what life was like here before it became a national recreation area with um, settlers and farms and families. And then as it has become a recreation area, um, now you can do all kinds of things like boating and swimming and 
hiking and motorbike. And just normal biking. Yeah, normal bike, mountain bike, um, horseback riding, all kinds of great activities to enjoy nature. And uh, then we went to the planetarium and we saw the show Traveling with Light. Well, how'd you like that show? It was pretty good. I think it was really good. Yeah. Okay, we are going to wrap it up here and head back to our campground to see how everyone else is doing. Another fantastic attraction at Land Between the Lakes is the Home Place 1850s Working Farm. The farm is a representation of what life was like for a multi-generational family farm in the area in the mid-19th century. The small blacksmith shop would have served to make or repair farm equipment such as creating nails, tools, and household items, sharpening plow points, repairing metal tools, and shaping horseshoes. <laughs> this coals or wood or both? So coals are the burning remains of a fuel, usually organic base. This is charcoal. Okay. So you can still see the wood grain in here. Yeah, it's wood charcoal. Cool. Uh, you can also burn charcoal or wood in this forge. Wood would be a little less efficient, and charcoal burns just as hot as coal. Coal lasts longer. Okay. So if you had a big forge welding something. project, you would be probably ordering coal in the 1850s and having it shipped to you. Oh. So I'll show you how we get to here. <laughs> Farm buildings have all been carefully preserved or reconstructed using period tools and methods. The workers and volunteers are all dressed in period clothing and are extremely knowledgeable about life on an 1850s farm. And even the farm animals, garden plants, and field crops are bred from stock of that time and location. The main farmhouse features an open central hallway that separates two equal sized pens or rooms. The open central hallway faced the prevailing winds and served as a cool shady setting for the family and guests. Tobacco was a cash crop for farmers in this region. Farmers fired and cured this 13-month crop by building smoldering fires in floor trenches of the barn. Altogether, the 1850s farm provided a very entertaining and educational day for kids and adults. The Elk and Bison Prairie shows what this area would have looked like to the Shawnee tribe who hunted the vast herds of elk and bison that populated this area. Unfortunately, during our time here, we only saw a handful of elk and no bison on the prairie. Nevertheless, the beautiful prairie flowers and trees 
made for a very relaxing drive. Park offers 260 miles of hiking trails, 100 miles of horse trails, and 70 miles of mountain bike trails. There's even the Turkey Bay Off-Highway Vehicle Area for you 4x4 enthusiasts. This very family-friendly park offers everything for water sports enthusiasts, including swimming, boating, canoeing, kayaking, and fishing. During our stay, we hiked the Hillman Heritage Trail, which follows historic roads from a thriving lime mining industry that began sometime before the Civil War. However, we found numerous downed and damaged trees that made the trail more challenging in some sections. So land between the lakes is a hundred, oh gosh, <laughs> 170,000 acres of land. Um, they have over 500 miles of trails and 300 miles of undeveloped shoreline. Some of the other things to do, they, they have um, hundreds of miles of trails for biking, hiking, horse riding. They've got, of course, the two lakes with 300 miles of shoreline, so you can do kayaking, stand-up paddleboard. There's a couple of marinas right outside of the park where you could rent pontoons, jet skis, um, and, and ski boats. And they have a whole off-highway vehicle, so like your ATVs and your motocross bikes, um, a whole section of that called Turkey Bay. So they have an elk and bison prairie, a 1800s working farm, a Golden Pond Visitor Center and Planetarium, the Nature Center. <laughs> yeah, so tons of stuff to do. My own web show, my own web show. Everybody wanna know. My own web show, my own web show, my own web show. How will it go? My own web show, my own web show, my own web show.